Today, we are going to go over how to warp a Merrix loom for bead weaving without the shedding device. Now first, I want to talk a little bit about why you would not want to use the shedding device. This is if you want to weave beads in the traditional method, which means you'd have your warp, you would put your beads on one side of the warp, and then you sew through on the other side. When you use the shedding device, instead of doing that, you lift up half your warps and place your beads in the middle, more like traditional tapestry weaving. So this will be without the shedding device, how you want to warp your loom. So we'll start off here. This is just Americ's loom. The legs are out, so it's sitting securely on a table. The first thing we want to do is just measure to make sure that the sides of the loom are even. And if they're not, we can adjust a little bit to make sure that they are. Now you want to choose which spring you're going to use, and there's more information on our website about figuring out what spring you should use for the different beads. You're going to take your spring and you're going to place it on in this tray here. You secure it on each side. There that is. Next, we're going to begin warping. We're going to take our clips. If you have a newer loom, you're going to have these wooden clips. If you have an older loom, you're going to have these black plastic clips, which don't come already on the loom. So if you have the wooden clips, you're just going to spin them around. You'll see a little indentation here and here, and that's where you're going to place your warping bar. With these black plastic clips, you're just going to screw them on like that. Once you have your clips backwards on your loom, you're going to take your warping bar, which is this, and you are going to place it in those indentations. And then you're going to slightly push your clips in so the warping bar is held securely in the back of the loom. Next, you are going to take whatever you want your warp thread to be. Right here, I am using Ceylon beading thread. And you are going to tie on. Now, depending on how wide your piece is, there's going to be a slight difference in where you are warping your loom. If you have a rather thin piece, then you want to warp on one side of the loom or the other side of the loom. And then when you do this, after you're done warping, you're going to balance out your warping bar because it's going to be taken out from these clips and just hanging on its own. You're going to balance out your warping bar either with another piece on the other side or just by tying some kind of ribbon or string on the other side to balance it. If you're doing a really wide piece, you may not need to do that because you'll have it in the middle of the loom and it will balance the warping bar on its own once you start warping. So once you tie your warp on, you're going to go up the back of the loom, around the top, and into one dent, which is a space between the spring. And then you're going to come down around the front of the loom, under the bottom bar, and back up to the warping bar. Now one thing to remember is, every time you hit the warping bar, you're going to switch direction. So you're going to go from the back to the front, around the warping bar, and back down the loom. Underneath the bottom beam, up the front of the loom, and we're going to go into the next dent over. So, for warping for beadwork without the shedding device, you only put one warp in each dent. That's important to remember. So we're going to go down the back of the loom. We're going to hit the warping bar, and when we hit the warping bar, we always switch direction. So we'll come back to the top. When we get to the top, we're going to come right here to the warp coil, also called spring. And we're just going to place our warp in the next den over. Then we're going to go back down. 
under the loom back up and then we're, when we hit the warping bar we're going to go around and come back the direction we came from and that is the basic concept so back under the loom around the front now when we hit this warp coil we're going to place our warp in the next dent over now we're going to come down we hit the warping bar and so we switch direction come back where we came from come back up around the top of the loom and into the next dent over now if you have a bottom spring kit you'd also be placing your warp in the dents of the bottom of the loom exactly how you do it at the top but I don't have a bottom spring kit on this. Bottom spring kits are useful for bead weaving, especially if you're doing a pretty wide bead piece, because it really helps you keep your warps organized. You can see if you have tons of these warps, it's really important that they don't get crossed. And so having that spring at the bottom helps with that. So we're going to keep going back down around the loom. We're going to hit the warping bar, and when we do, we're going to switch direction. Come back down the loom, around the bottom beam. Up the front of the loom, when we hit the spring, we are going to place our warp in the next end over. We're going to go around the top of the loom, down the back. When we hit our warping bar, we're just going to switch direction. Come to the top of the loom. We're going to go into the next dent over. And we're going to go down the loom, around the bottom beam. Up to the warping bar. When we hit our warping bar, we're going to switch direction come back down. We're going to, again, go down the bottom beam. Now here we may want to look at our warps, put them together a little bit, just make sure that they're organized. I think it's really important to have your, organize, your warps organized while you're warping the loom rather than after it's already warped because it really helps you prevent yourself from making any mistakes. Another thing you want to do is up here at the spring, check to see that there's only one warp thread in each dent. Here is some detail on the top of the loom. You can see here we have one warp in every dent. You can see how that's organized. So now when we have warped as much as we want to warp, then when we hit the warping bar right here, all we're going to do is tie a knot. And you're going to want to tie this as tight as you can, the best knot you can, because you want your salvage or the sides of your piece to be even. So it's helpful to use something such as this bar right here just to help you get a really tight knot. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to swing out our clips so the warping bar is now only held up by the warp. And we're just going to bring this warping bar down. Now the next thing we're going to do, because you can see that this warping bar can't be held by such a thin warp on this side, is we're just going to take a ribbon and we're going to tie it around the warping bar, go around the bottom beam, around the top beam, and tie it just to balance that other side. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So now that our warping bar is balanced by this ribbon on the other side, we're going to do two things. The first thing is we're going to take this bar called the spring bar, and we're just going to put it through the spring and make sure it's in front of your warps here. And that's just going to make sure your warps don't out at any point. Now the last thing you want to do before you start weaving your beads is make sure that your tension is correct. The way to test this is when you start weaving your beads 
that you're able to do it correctly, that you're able to place your beads and sew through and you're not missing a bead or anything like that. Um, so you're going to have to experiment a little bit, but the way that you tighten your warp and the way that you loosen it is by turning these wing nuts. So we want to make sure that these are even, so as you turn, remember to keep measuring each side. And you can always loosen or tighten your tension as you're working. Um, and that's that. You are done. Ready to start weaving beads.